my name is Jeff Smith, and uh, I'm going to show a solution that we also did. For, um, they have a large number of products, uh, several thousand, and for all of their corporate type accounts, they want to give them unique pricing, which means they will have hundreds of price lists and trying to manage priceless items for that many products on that many different price lists would be a nightmare to try to do it manually. So we wanted a process where if a new price list got added, then the products, uh, the price list items would get added automatically. It would go through and look at all the products and create a price list item for them. Uh, to complicate it uh, a little further, because most of their stuff winds up being that way. They have several different categories of products. Uh, they could have a one year state and federal plan uh, or state or federal sets or federal contractor, et cetera. And so any product that is of that type will get this price when it gets added as a price list item, this price, et cetera, on this one. Uh, so they have to set those up. Uh, the other side of this coin is if a new product gets added, there's a different process that goes through and adds it to all active price lists. Um, so they don't have to manage price list items pretty much at all uh, at this point. But we'll just look at this side of it today. Now, when I first did this process, uh, it was just a, a serial process, right? It just it was a flow that ran serially through and it took somewhere in the neighborhood of three and a half hours. Uh, to get through all the products and get all the price list items created. So I reached out for a little bit of help and Derek uh, gave me the concept of let's use uh, parallel uh, actions um, inside of our main flow. So when a price list gets added or modified uh, and I set it up so if they change any of those particular uh, columns, uh, on the modification that it will kick off and start running these. So it starts running all of these child flows at the same time. And what those child flows do, uh, this is one of them. And they are set up, I believe, um, I have to go back and look, but we've got concurrency turned on so that they can uh, run through uh, and process more quickly. So each of those child um, flows it deals with an individual type. This one says, you know, if it's uh, uh, a particular, you know, uh, uh, SNF plan, uh, then um, we're gonna we're gonna run that child that particular child flow and go handle those type products. And so there's a child flow for each one of those product types. Uh, that runs down through and it goes down through and creates the price list item for them. And there's also one at the end, if it does not fall into any of those categories, um, there is um, on each product a, a, a field that, that says what the standard price of it is. Um, and it just adds that uh, standard price, which they could then go override that price if they wanted to. But uh, when we turned it into a parallel flow like this, it went from three plus hours to somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes uh, for the process to run if they add a new price list into the system. So runs much more efficiently, uh, much, much faster, uh, and it allows them to manage all of their price lists. Uh, as you can see, I mean, this is just here in their test environment and they've got several set up, but they will ultimately wind up uh, with somewhere north of a hundred different price lists in the system. Um, and, and like I said, trying to manage price list items for that many products on that many price lists would be a full-time job. So this should save them a great deal of time and effort. I think that's all I've got. Are there any questions on it? I, uh, I put uh, the link for how to create parallel um paths in the chat if anyone is interested. Can you restate the business problem again? The, the business problem was 
trying to manage price list item records on a large number of price lists for a very large number of products. So you create a new price list and then you're automatically adding all the products to that price list with the default price for that product. With with the price list for that particular. Um, but, uh, look, this is one that Aisha set up. She set up these values for these different types of items. Oh, OK, so it's using the category. Yeah, and the product okay. went through the process went through and created 2,324 priceless items. I was trying to product. figure out what the what the uh, key was, but essentially if, if it's in each of those five categories, then it knows to assign that specific price. Correct. Yeah, okay. So th this is uh, uh, an all-in-one poster, and it got set at thirty-four ninety-five. This is a plan that got set at fifty-eight ninety-five. Yeah. And if you go back here and look, it picked those two numbers up from here. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not so much that the you know because some customers they want to change their price list every year and all their products. So this would be. It could also be leveraged in a way to help them pre-populate even if it was a manual process and they could go in there and change the prices, but it gets them in the right direction. Yeah, you, you could set it up for, um, uh, instead of using, you know, different product or different categories like this, uh, just put, you know, what you want the price to be, uh, mm -hmm. and it could go through and, and update the existing items. Or you could modify it and they could say, okay, we're gonna raise the prices by 10% this year, go ahead and, and update them all. The process also looks to see if a price list item already exists, and if it does, it just updates it. So I could go modify one of these, and it would kick off and go update the price list uh, item value for that all of that type of product in the system. Josh, do you have another question? Yes, I have a question for you. Uh, with with uh, price list items in the thousands, have you seen any performance issues when the asynchronous process runs to apply price thing on like opportunities and quote lines, or has it been pretty good? Um, I haven't seen any performance issues there. Um, one thing they are using is. Um, me take a quick look here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let me go to a different one. And this is something that I'm not sure that everybody's seen, but but uh, Jeff Postma found this for us. Uh, not yeah. under normal use. I usually don't see it taking that much time. This one's using the default price list, and when you add products here. There's actually a new feature that Microsoft's implemented that's it's I guess still in in test or whatever. Um, but you can just flip it on and it gives you this ability to go in and search for different products. Oh, yeah. And for Tennessee. Yeah, we've seen this. Yeah. yeah. Tennessee cool. items. I could do, pick a quantity and add that and add that and add that and mm -hmm. add them all to the order at once. Okay. Cool. Okay. Anything else? I think that's all I've got. 